Good evening and welcome to the 30th Annual Minnesota Book Awards. I'm Elaine Hopkins, Director of Programs in the Minnesota Book Awards for the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to this evening of celebration in honor of Minnesota's writers. Tonight is also a testament to the incredible literary community we have here and the 30 years of stories that have been published, read, and honored over the Book Awards history. Over the last 12 years, the Friends has been privileged to connect readers, writers, and communities in every corner of our state. Thank you very much for being here to attest to and celebrate the tremendous talent and passion for the literary life that we as Minnesotans have created. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our host for the evening, Rohan Preston. A playwright, poet, and photographer, Rohan has been theater critic at the Star Tribune since 1998. He previously wrote for the Chicago Tribune and the New York Times. A graduate of Yale, he and his wife, the poet Angela Shannon, are parents to two daughters. Please join me in welcoming Rohan Preston. Thank you and good evening. Good evening. <laughs> it's my pleasure to be here uh, in this uh, august um, gathering. Um, this is uh, a very special community that we live in. Um, I moved here 20 years ago, and um, I, had, I didn't know Minnesota at the time. And um, what I knew about Minnesota was confirmed um, last week with a blizzard. Um, uh, but. Um, what I've grown to know is the secret, which is that this is an amazing community with amazing, amazing artistic support, amazing artists, um, a, a plethora of, of, of creativity and genius. Doesn't mean that we're immune to all the challenges of the rest of the country. We have those too, but those are the things that motivate us and, and push us forward. So I'm delighted, I'm honored uh, to be here tonight and um, thank you very much um, for asking me to be your MC. So, um, <clears throat> we are here tonight to celebrate the accomplishments of your fellow Minnesotans and partners in the literary community. But before we get to tonight's nominees, let's pause to remember th those we have lost. Over the last year, we have had to say goodbye to several beloved members of that community whose spirit and words live on, including two-time Minnesota Book Award winner, Sherry Register, author of Packing House Daughter and The Big Marsh. Patricia Johnson McDonald, publisher of Afton Press and a Minnesota Book Award winner. J. Otis Powell, writer, performer, performance artist, mentor and teacher, and musician. And Susan Stan, renowned children's book professor and advocate. They will be dearly missed. Now, switching moods, on to tonight's honorees. There were 256 submissions for the nine category awards um, we'll be presenting tonight, in addition to three special awards. Previous Minnesota Book Award winners are here to present the honors, which include a hand-blown glass award by St. Paul artist Dick Huss, and then the Willie August Project is backed. That is uh, their music, absolutely. All right, let's get started. We begin this evening with an appropriate um, award um, for the state, the category of Minnesota nonfiction. The four writers and, and books that comprise the finalists for this award help us plumb the depths of our state history and shared culture. Um, here to present the award and give a brief remembrance of last year's winner is Mary Lethard Wingert, the 2011 Book Award and 2012 
Hegnander Minnesota History Award winner for North Country, The Making of Minnesota. Well, I'm very happy to be here this evening to celebrate all the fine work created by the 2018 Minnesota Book Award nominees. But I do wish I were not the person standing on the stage. Because traditionally, each of the Minnesota Book Awards is presented by the previous year's winner. But sadly, last year's winner, the talented and generous-spirited Sherry Register, passed away last month. Sherry was twice the recipient of a Minnesota Book Award. First, for her unforgettable memoir, Packing House Daughter, that beautifully evokes the dignity and fragility of working class lives. And then last year, for The Big Marsh, the story of a lost landscape, where she turned her gift for empathy and luminous prose into a memoir of the land itself. Sherry will be greatly missed, but not only for her literary talents. She was even more lovely as a person and as a friend than in the words she wove so beautifully on the page. She would have loved to be here tonight because she was unfailingly supportive of fellow writers and seemed to savor their success as much as her own, and I can personally attest to that. So I'm channeling her cheers along with mine for the talented writers I'm about to introduce. And so, here are the finalists. A Bag Worth a Pony, The Art of the Ojibwa Bandolier Bag by Marcia G. Anderson, published by the Minnesota Historical Society Press. Got to be something here, The Rise of the Minneapolis Sound by Andrea Swenson, published by the University of Minnesota Press. Miles Lord, the maverick judge who brought corporate America to justice by Roberta Walburn, also published by the University of Minnesota Press. And finally, but not least, Sights, Sounds, Soul, The Twin Cities Through the Lens of Charles Shambliss by Davu Saru, photography by Charles Shambliss, published by the Minnesota Historical Society Press. And the award goes to, I hope I'm not going to be like Warren Beatty. <laughs> the award goes to, for Minnesota nonfiction, to Andrea Swenson. Got to be something here. The rise of the Minneapolis sound. It is a really uh, complicated day to accept this award because it's the two year anniversary that we lost Prince. And um, a big part of what I hoped to do with this book was to really contextualize him and humanize him in, within the history of the place where he came from and a place that he was so proud of. Um, I would like to thank Prince uh, for encouraging me. Um, I would like to thank my editor, Eric, uh, for saying two really important words, keep going. And I would like to uh, dedicate this award to all of the unsung heroes in our music scene that have not had the opportunity to be heard because of racism, sexism, classism, and white supremacy. Thank you. That's beautiful, and it uh, makes me wish, actually, that I'd worn purple tonight. So, um, you know, let's go crazy. Um, now we'll move to picture books with the award for children's literature. Presenting the award is J.J. Austrian, last year's winner for Worm Loves Worm. J.J.?
They say that one of the keys to a good picture book is brevity. The finalists for children's literature are <laughs> A Different Pond by Bao Fi, illustrated by T. Bui, published by Capstone Young Readers. Mighty Moby by Ed Young, text by Barbara DaCosta, published by Little Brown Books for Young Readers, Hatchet Book Group. Hachette, excuse me. Round by Joyce Sidman, illustrated by Tai Un Yu, published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. And The Shape of the World, a portrait of Frank Lloyd Wright by K. L. Going, illustrated by Lauren Stringer, published by Beach Lane Books, Simon & Schuster. And the award goes to Bao Fi. Make some noise for beginner's luck. Uh, uh, you know, and it, it's a good thing because the children's book community in Minnesota is so mean <laughs> and competitive. It's just, no, actually the complete opposite is true. Thank you so much to the Kids Lit community in Minnesota being so welcoming and gracious to a beginner. Thank you so much. Uh, really, really quickly, um, I, I got to thank Jossie Hale, Curtis Galetta, um, people uh, who really helped me directly with the book. That would be Molly Beth Griffin, Sarah Park Dolan, Shannon Gibney. Um, I really want to thank all the librarians, teachers, and parents who got this book for kids. Um, uh, I really got to give a shout out, obviously, to the wonderful illustrator, T. Bui, who. Um, <laughs> This is really her book as well as mine, and so props to T. Um, and Capstone, um, I, you know, thank you so much for publishing this book. Not just for publishing it, but the way that you published it. Um, it it's just been an amazing experience, thank you. Especially to uh, Jennifer and Chrissy. Chrissy edited the heck out of this book. And, uh, uh, and thank you so much. And last thing, um, thank you to the, of course, the We Need Diverse Books movement. Uh, thank you all so much. I, thank you. Congratulations. I love this music too. Um, a third award is for a novel and short story, and joining us to present the award is Minnesota Book Award winner and author of Vestments, John Reimringer. John? I've had the good fortune to be on sabbatical for the last year, and I was really dreading getting up in front of a crowd since I've been not been in front of a classroom even. But J.J. Austrian removed all, all pressure because his intro was so good. I was like, okay, I give up. Um, I'd like to thank Elaine for asking me to fill in for last year's winner, Peter Guy. It's always fun to stand in front of a big crowd and hand out a prize. Um, all of tonight's fiction finalists share some elements of the fantastical but they also give us the enduring gift of literature. They invite us into the lives and inner spaces of others. And in a world that today is often only screen deep, storytelling reminds us to slow down, to consider, and to be compassionate. This year's finalists are Future Home of the Living God by Louise Erdrich, published by Harper. Collins Publishers, 
Stories for a Lost Child by Carter Meland, published by Michigan State University Press. The Through by A. Raphael Johnson, published by Jaded Ibis Press. And What It Means When a Man Falls from the Sky by Leslie Neka Arima. Published by Riverhead Books and Penguin Random House. It's always so exciting. And the award goes to Leslie Neka Arima. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I did not expect this. Um, I want to thank everyone who uh, not only told me that I could keep going, but those who challenged me and pushed me to be better and pushed back against the work that I had done. Um, you know, the people who make up your community are the wedding stone on which you sharpen your skills. And so I thank them so much for. Um, being exactly what I needed. Uh, when I moved to Minnesota about a decade ago, I came from Louisiana and before that Nigeria. Um, I'm very happy that I stuck it out and that I you know, stayed in Minnesota after graduation, um, graduating from my MFA program to take advantage of all of the resources that Minnesota has to offer for artists. And Minnesota is, is a state that cares for its artists and shows that with very practical things like monetary support. And so I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much. is a special award bestowed on an individual or an organization for outstanding contributions to Minnesota's literary community. And it's named for Kay Sexton, a career bookseller and dedicated arts advocate. Here tonight to introduce a Kay Sexton Award honoree with a special video tribute is Lana Barkawi, executive and artistic director of MISNA. I could not be more pleased to join this tribute to Catherine Haddad. I'm going to say a few words, but first, please turn your attention to the screens for, the, for a brief look at her exceptional literary life. Kathy Haddad is an accomplished writer and playwright. And I've long admired her work, especially with Love from Romala and Zafira, the Olive Oil Warrior. She founded Misna, the country's first Arab-American literary journal. And this journal has been absolutely instrumental to the burgeoning of Arab-American literature, both in Minnesota and nationally. Misna was founded by Kathy Haddad in the late 90s. She and others she was in community with saw this profound gap in the literary landscape for Arab American letters. And so she gathered the smart Arab and Muslim folks she knew and launched the organization to publish the journal. Not only has the organization always had the mission to publish excellent writing, it was based on such a solid foundation of ideas that we still think a lot about as a culture 20 years later. 
since the very first issue of the journal. The voices that we've published and championed over the years have been Arabs and Muslims who are gay and straight, who are religious and also estranged from religion, who represent the geographic diversity of the Middle East and North Africa, who are artists and business peoples and people from all walks of life. Kathy's contribution to the world of literature, of theater, of culture shaping is really unparalleled. At a time when there was no space at all for Arab, Arab American literature or Arab American conversation, Kathy had the bold, audacious, uh, strong vision to create a Mizna. Haddad has given of her own time and talents, and this gift has benefited not just the Arab American community or just the Minnesota literary community, but our community and nation as a whole. Haddad and Mizna, in her contributions as a writer, editor, and leader, have been crucial to fighting against the forces of darkness in our country and bringing both enlightenment and enrichment to our culture and society. Um, Kathy Haddad's um, singular vision and her fierce support of Arab American writers and writing um, has spawned such a movement, uh, and it's national, um, it's assertive, it's militant, and it's pugnacious, and I'm so proud to be part of it. Um, on behalf of St. Catherine University, the Minnesota Book Awards, and the entire Minnesota book community, it is my honor to present the Kay Sexton Award to Catherine Haddad. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Lana. Uh, thank you to the friends of the St. Paul Library for making this event happen today, to Lana Barkawi for all she does for so wonderfully making sure that that rain cloud in the desert that is Mizna continues to move forward. Thanks to my parents and family for their support, love, and guidance, especially my father who died four years ago next month who instilled in me pride in our heritage through his own stories and his being in the world. And thanks to the people who had a bit of power and pulled us with them over the last 25 years, especially David Mura, Carolyn Holbrook, and Dipankar Mukherjee, three people who I've learned so much from and have inspired me, dreamt with me, and taught me to continue on. I wouldn't be here today without their support and powerful guidance. Not too long ago, in events like this, it would have been unheard of for Arab Americans to claim a moment like this one. I'm pleased to see how things are slowly changing in some of our literary and art circles to include Arab American voices. But much more needs to happen to make sure our voices are heard and protected in universities and public school classrooms, on our stages, in film, publishing, and of course on the ground where people are trying to survive. In this time of Islamophobia, anti-Arab racism, the squelching of civil rights, bombs being dropped on our people, we need Arab American voices more than ever. Thanks again for this honor, and here's to all the others who are speaking and writing and creating in refugee camps, in universities, and in their rooms late at night. May their words rise above the noise that has been designed to silence them. Thank you. Congratulations. Now we have the Memoir and Creative Nonfiction Award category. Here tonight as the presenter is Kao Kalia Yang, two-time book award winner, most recently for last year's The Song Poet, A Memoir of My Father.
So I know you all can't see me, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to be here to lend my voice in commending these four authors for the work that they do because, because I love creative nonfiction. In a, for a Hmong girl who faced the nonfiction monsters of this world, I did not know where to turn or how to, how to harness the heart of me onto the page. It was through the lens of creative nonfiction that I could free my imagination, find the swords of my ancestor, and, and make a place for myself in this world that I'm finding so much love in. And so it is my pleasure and a tremendous privilege to announce this year's finalists. Give a Girl a Knife by Amy Thielen, published by Clarkson Potter in Crown Publishing. It won't be easy, an exceedingly honest and slightly unprofessional love letter to teaching by Tom Rodemacher, published by the University of Minnesota Press. Marcel's Letters of Font and the Search for One Man's Fate by Carolyn Porter, published by Skyhorse Publishing. And Oniga Singh, Seasons of Ojibwe Year by Linda Lagarde Grover, published by University of Minnesota Press. And the award goes to Linda Lagarde Grover, Seasons of Ojibwe Year. I would like to thank all the wonderful people at the University of Minnesota Press. I would like to thank my, my husband, Tim, my, my daughters, Wabasu and Sigesis, and Wabashgeshi, my grandchildren, and um, most of all, my, my grandparents and the people of ger their generation who made it possible for, for me to be here. And we all of my generation now are honored to hand on their legacy to the next one. So, miigwech. It's so exciting to see the richness of this, this community coming up here. It's just, it's just wonderful. Our next category is general nonfiction. Presenting is two-time book award winner, Sean Otto, author of last year's The War on Science, Who's Waging It, Why It Matters, What We Can Do About It. Sean. You guys, it's such an honor to be presenting this category. Great stories are as important in nonfiction as they are in fiction. The work by this year's finalists in general nonfiction captures our hearts and minds with truly great stories. From a moving photo documentary of ranch life to laugh out loud editorial cartoons, from living through World War I to navigating life in modern democracy, each of these amazing books draws us in with stories of a young Minnesotan abroad during wartime, of a disappearing way of life in the American West, of a step-by-step -step abdication of democracy as fear overcomes the ability to self-govern, and of the ridiculous ironies and sometimes deeply touching moments in our political process. Stories of the world around us. This year's finalists are um, Alice in France, The World War I Letters of Alice M. O'Brien by Nancy O'Brien Wagner, published by Minnesota Historical Society Press. Yes. The first and only book of Sack, 36 Years of Cartoons for the Star Tribune by Steve Sack, published by Star Tribune Media Company. Fortress America. How We Embraced Fear and Abandoned Democracy by Elaine Tyler May, published by Basic Books, an imprint of Hachette Book Group. And finally, Mountain Ranch by Michael Krauser, published by University of Texas Press. And the award goes to Steve Sack. The first and only book of Sack, 36 Years of Cartoons for the Star of Tribune. Well, 
Wow. I love libraries, I love librarians. I, uh, I learned cartooning from libraries. Every week when I was 13 years old, I would go to our local West St. Paul library to look at the magazines, the cartoons in the magazines, the Saturday Evening Post, the New Yorker, uh, Look Magazine. I have to thank my boss, Scott Gillespie, for pestering me for years to do this book. Um, Dave Banks and Mike Rice for pounding it into shape. Uh, Tom Rainey and Steve Yeager, our marketing gurus, uh, for selling the thing, and Martha Parrish for solving innumerable problems. Uh, most of all, I want to thank the Star Tribune for giving me a platform for 36 years so far. Um, you know, you look around this room and you see writers and artists at the top of their game. It's exciting, it's exhilarating, inspiring, and I feel that every day when I walk into the offices of the Star Tribune. Thank you. Now we're pleased to honor uh, Minnesota Book Artists for excellence and contributions to Minnesota Book Arts community with the Book Artist Award. Here to make tonight's presentation is last year, last year Book Artist Award winner, Stephen McCarthy. Welcome. I'm honored to be here tonight to help celebrate book artist Erica Spitzer Rasmussen in recognition of the excellence of her work, The Love Affair, a mixed media sculptural book handcrafted from pieces of old family letters, in particular her, her grandparents' love letters. The work was praised by the review panel as, quote, playful, clever, and referential in its reference to the art of love letters, an avant-garde play on the notion of a book, and yet the narrative, the history, and the intimacy are mysteriously palpable. On behalf of Lerner Publishing Group, the Minnesota Book Awards, and the Minnesota Center for Book Arts, I present the 2018 Book Artist Award to Erica Spitzer Rasmussen. After my mother's death, I inherited two boxes with love letters exchanged between my grandparents in the 1930s before they were wed. She lived in Manhattan, he lived in Washington State. When the idea came to me that I should cut the letters up and make a book, I asked my aunt for permission. I also told my uncle on the other side of the family about my plan. He, being a historian, urged me not to do it. But after my aunt agreed, I tentatively cut into the first letter. It felt sacrilegious. After reading, cutting, and interspersing the letters, I bound them with a Coptic stitch. This was difficult because the antique papers just seemed to disintegrate in my hands. It took four months to make the book that uh, included over 6,000 pages. The book was placed in one of the wooden boxes handcrafted by my grandfather in the form of an infinity symbol to suggest that the couple might continue their communion from life into death. Gratitude is due to Lerner Publishing Group, the Friends of the St. Paul Public Libraries, and the Minnesota Department of Education 
Gratitude is due to Minnesota Center for Book Arts that has provided me with papermaking facilities and bookmaking expertise for over 20 years. Gratitude is due to my family who support me in every aspect of my artistic work. And gratitude is due to Metropolitan State University that helps me to execute some of my book projects abroad and also allows me to teach a new generation of book artists. Thank you. Thank you all who contribute to a thriving, book-loving community. Thank you. Our next award um, is for the middle for middle grade literature, comprised of fiction and nonfiction for young readers, and it's with an acclaimed group of authors as finalists. And here to present the award in a dapper bow tie is Brian Ferry, two-time Minnesota Book Award winner. Last year's honoree was the Secret Dreadwillow Cars. Brian. Good evening. A wealth of today's finest voices in middle grade literature call Minnesota home, and I'm delighted to be here tonight to stand side by side with four of my writing colleagues whose work not only challenges readers, but also illuminates who they really are. Here are the finalists. A Crack in the Sea by H.M. Bauman, published by G.P. Putnam Sons, Penguin Random House. The End of the Wild by Nicole Helgett, published by Little Brown and Company, Hachette Book Group. Isaac the Alchemist, Secrets of Isaac Newton, revealed by Mary Lozier, published by Candlewick Press. And Rooting for Rafael Rosales by Curtis Scaletta, published by Albert Whitman and Company. And the award goes to Thirtieth annual Minnesota Book Award for Middle Grade Literature goes to Nicole Helgett, The End of the Wild. Wow, I've never been up here before. I might not leave. <laughs> Mostly, I just want to thank the young readers. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to turn this world over to them. <laughs> also, thanks to my agent and my publishing company and the great state of Minnesota, and especially the teachers and librarians and my wonderful family. Um, my love, Eric, is here somewhere. I love you. Um, thank you. Congratulations. So the final special honor of this evening is a biennial award for the full-length book of scholarship on the topic of Minnesota history. Here to present the award to the 2018 honoree is William Green, winner of the 2016 Hagnander Award for Degrees of Freedom, The Origin of Civil Rights in Minnesota, 1865 to 1912. Mr. Green. I'm honored to be here tonight to present the Hognander Minnesota History Award to Gary Kalnonen uh, for his book, Flames of Discontent, the 1960 Or Strike, from a field of, of immensely worthy books published in, 19, in, in two, 2016 to 2017. His book was reviewed and chosen by history professor and writer Douglas Hurt, who noted, this is an important study of a major labor dispute in Minnesota 
and as such, a significant contribution for the state's history. But it is more than that. Kaunonen's uh, study of the Finnish miners in, in Masabi and Vermilion region uh, of the Iron Range and their relationship to the industrial workers of the world uh, makes a major contribution to the labor history of the United States. So on behalf of the Minnesota Book Awards and the Hognander Family Foundation, I present the 2018 Hognander, uh, Hognander Minnesota History Award to Gary Kaunaunen. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to be as ranger as I can. I'm going to dig in. That's a pun, and uh, go after it here. I'd like to first thank my uh, my family, my wife Brooke, my parents Art and Edie, who were original Iron Rangers, and the person who thinks she is my manager, my daughter Sophie. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Hognander family for their generous support of this. I'd like to thank the friends of the St. Paul Library. Uh, for putting this on, the Minnesota Historical Society, the University of Minnesota Press, and probably damn near the best editor uh, in Minnesota, Christian Tweeton. And then uh, lastly, I would like to, to thank uh, the folks who lived the strike. Uh, I had the honor and the privilege of representing their story, and uh, it's a wonderful and uh, extraordinary story uh, that revolves mainly around immigrants. And uh, with the climate that we have today and the discussions we have about immigrants, uh, it's, we should note that the faces of those immigrants within 100 years have changed, but their plight hasn't necessarily changed. Uh, so I'd like to thank them for their contributions to Minnesota and U.S. labor. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, we're entering the final stretch now, and um, we have the award for poetry, and Sun Yun Shin, she's coming. Last year's winner for Unbearable Splendor will present this year's award. Gratitude to the Dakota and Ojibwe peoples and nations on whose homelands we live and work. American poet Audre Lorde in a 1991 interview said, quote, June Jordan once said something which is just wonderful, I'm paraphrasing her, that her function as a poet was to make revolution irresistible. Well, okay, that is the function of us all as creative artists to make the truth as we see it irresistible. That's what I want to do with all of my writing, end quote. And that's what the four poets here tonight have done with their books. This year's finalists are Autopsy by Dante Collins, published by Button Poetry. Curator of Ephemera at the New Museum for Archaic Media by Hyde E. Erdrich. <laughs> published by Michigan State University Press. Solve for Desire by Caitlin Bailey, published by Milkweed Editions. <laughs> and Thousand Star Hotel by Bao Fee, published by Coffee House Press. And the Poetry Award goes to Hyde E. Erdrich. Oh, yeah. 
curator of ephemera at the New Museum for Archaic Media. You know, when everybody else comes up here and said they didn't prepare, they were lying, but I am not. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so sweet. I got to give this award to Sun Yangshin last year, and I'm so grateful. And I'm really grateful to the other people and all the other poets who um, accomplished making a book of poems, which is an incredibly remarkable thing in this day and age. Um, but Dante and Caitlin and Bao, I am really honored to be in your company. I have to thank people, and I can't even think of who, but my family is here, so I'll start with them. <laughs> and my editors, and my editors who are present. I really appreciate you um, for all the books that I write. Uh, there's so many great poetry opportunities in Minnesota, and it's why I live here, even though I was born here. I'm incredibly <laughs> grateful. <laughs> but one of them that not everybody gets is having librarians on your side, and I've called them my holy people, and I mean that. Thank you so much, and thank you, Wallaching Property Management. Amazing. Thank you. We, we have to put that in a refrigerator magnet. That's why I live here, even though I was born here. <laughs> it's funny. The penultimate award is for genre fiction. I love that word, by the way, penultimate. In this category, we have returning finalists and award winners to recognize, including co-author um, P.J. Lambrecht, who passed away in the late 2016 and is still dearly missed. Please join me in welcoming Minnesota Book Award winner Alan Eskins to present the award, last year's honoree for the Heavens May Fall. It is my pleasure and honor to be here tonight to present the Minnesota Book Award for Genre Fiction. John Gardner defines verisimilitude as that ability to write with such detail and authenticity that the reader cannot help but believe that the story they are reading is true. That kind of moment-by-moment -moment authenticity is the lifeblood of every fiction writer, and I believe that is especially true for genre fiction. Our four finalists tonight have certainly hit the mark when it comes to verisimilitude, transporting their readers to the inner workings of the dark net and an epic battle of good versus evil, to the gothic halls of a tuberculosis sanitarium turned art artist retreat where the sins of the past do not rest, to the southern border of the United States and a fight for dignity and justice, and to the hunt for a serial killer that takes us from the skyline of Twin, the Twin Cities to the cornfields of Cottonwood County. The finalists tonight for genre fiction are The Dark Net by Benjamin Percy, published by Houghton, Mifflin, Harcourt. <clears throat> the End of Temperance Dare by Wendy Webb, published by Lake Union Publishing. Nothing Stays Buried by P.J. Tracy, published by G.P. Putnam & Sons, Penguin Random House, and Sulphur Springs by William Kent Kruger, published by Atria Books, Simon Schuster. And the award for genre fiction goes to Wendy Webb, The End of Temperance Dare. <laughs> I really didn't expect this, given um, the excellence of my co-nominees, who I am all really proud to, to call friends. I just want to tell you guys a little story. I told this at the Meet the Finalists um, reception, and it got a little bit of a laugh, so I thought I'd let you know, too. Uh, <laughs> 
a while back, I was doing a reading, and after it was over, people were asking questions, and they said, hey, you know, you write genre fiction, you write mysteries, don't you want to lend your talents to something more important? Yeah. And I said, no. <laughs> and I would even go so far as to say, hell no. <laughs> I have a great time every day thinking up the stories that I write, and I hope you guys have a great time reading them. And that's all I'm trying to do. So thank you very much. It really means a lot to me. It's here, only one award is left on that table. So we're about to do the last award and it's for Young Adult Literature. Here to present the award is Jeff Herbach, author of several books for young readers and a book award winner for Nothing Special. Jeff. Hello, last award. It's been a great night. Um, the Kids Lit community in this state is powerful and it's, it's nationally recognized, and it, that's just true. And in thinking about this crew of finalists, it, it occurs to me that maybe our amazing institutions of higher learning have something to do with that fact. I'm thankful to live in a state with this active intellectual culture that is in no small part due to the wealth of excellent colleges and universities, both public and private, that, that create sort of a, a burbling cauldron of, of greatness. So could we have just one round of rousing Minnesota applause for, for higher learning in the state of Minnesota? Thank you. The finalists for Young Adult Literature are The Exo Project by Andrew DeYoung, published by Boyd's Mill Press Highlights. The Last Thing You Said by Sarah Byron, published by Amulet Books, Abrams. Thief's Cunning by Sarah Ayers, published by Harper Teen, Harper Collins Publishers. And Things I'm Seeing Without You, by Peter Bugnani, published by Dial Books, Penguin Random House. And the final award of the evening goes to Andrew DeYoung for the EXO Project. surprising and very bright. Um, I, it's hard to go last. Um, I'm going to start by thanking the most important person, and that's my wife, um, who is, uh, Sarah, you're both my uh, biggest fan and my harshest critic. And um, that's like a really important uh, combination. I don't know how you pull it off. Um, thank you. I love you. Um, I share this award with you. Um, my fellow nominees, um, uh, this is the coolest club I've ever been a part of. Thank you. Um, particularly Sarah Byron, um, meeting you, uh, Sarah's awesome, meeting you, uh, releasing on the same day as you, having a launch party with you, and becoming friends with you is like one of the best things that's come out of this, so thank you so much. Um, and then just uh, to uh, the awards, the judges, thank you for taking a risk on this, on this weird little book. Um, the writing life is, it can actually feel fairly isolated, even after you've been published, it's hard to it's uh, evidence that you're making an impact is uh, is hard to come by. So thank you for reminding me that uh, that this really does matter and that uh, we are making an impact. Thank you. Have a good night. I almost wanted to sing in other words, but no, beautiful. 
Um, it's, it's been a night. It's, it's really extraordinary. Um, congratulations to all of tonight's winners and all the finalists for their extraordinary work. Thank you.